Frank Sheeran recounts his journey from World War II veteran to hitman for the Bufalino crime family and his alleged assassination of his close friend Jimmy Hoffa. Welcome back to Movies Explained. Today's film is a crime drama from 2019 titled The Irishman. The movie begins in a nursing home where an elderly man named Frank Sheeran is reflecting on his past. He used to work as a delivery man for a slaughterhouse tirelessly working for eight years without a break. Despite his hard work, he was paid poorly and struggled to support his family. One day, his delivery truck broke down near a gas station. A middle-aged man named Russell Bufalino came to his aid and helped him fix the truck. Frank was thankful for Russell's assistance, and they briefly introduced themselves before Frank went back to work. Later that night at a bar, Frank met a restaurant owner known as Skinny Razor, Frank offered him steak at a discounted price, but Skinny Razor seemed to doubt the quality of Frank's meat. He asked to taste it for himself. The following day, Frank went about his usual work routine. He requested more meat to deliver, but the worker didn't seem interested and instead handed him a seal for the truck door, asking Frank to put it on before he left. Frank, however, ignored the instruction, leaving without sealing the door. While on his route, he made a stop at Skinny's restaurant to deliver some meat. Afterward, he sealed the door and continued with the rest of his deliveries. This pattern continued, with Frank even sharing his earnings from Skinny with other employees. Skinny was happy with the quality of the meat and began ordering more from Frank. Eventually, Frank decided to deliver all the meat directly from the slaughterhouse to Skinny's restaurant. Aware that the truck was empty during these trips, Frank's boss became upset and sued him for theft. Frank, upon learning about the lawsuit against him, sought out an attorney for assistance. This is when he met William Bufalino, who assured Frank that he would defend him regardless of his guilt. During their discussion, William asked Frank about his reasons for allegedly stealing from his boss. Frank openly shared his situation. He had worked tirelessly for eight years without a single day off, yet his boss never raised his pay. William skillfully used Frank's testimony to challenge his boss in court. He presented the case so effectively that even the judge sided with Frank and William. The judge was furious with Frank's boss for suing him and even warned against future lawsuits. As a result, Frank was recognized as a diligent worker and came out of the trial with a positive judgment. After winning the trial, William took Frank to celebrate at Skinny's restaurant. It was there that Frank discovered William was the cousin of a mobster, Russell Bufalino, who had previously helped him with his truck problem. In the restaurant, Frank also noticed a mafia boss named Bruno, who seemed to be paying close attention to him while chatting with Skinny. Russell had taken a liking to Frank's personality after their first meeting. He was especially impressed when he learned that Frank, an Irishman, could speak Italian. Frank explained that he had learned Italian during his four years of war service in Italy. However, Frank had a dark side. During the war, he had forced two prisoners to dig their own graves before killing them. After leaving his job at the slaughterhouse, Frank began working for Russell, who ran a small curtain shop as a front for his mobster activities. Russell was highly respected by everyone who knew him. He assisted other mafia members in various ways, taking over businesses, securing promotions for government workers, bribing judges, settling disputes between mobsters, and even carrying out killings. His authority was so immense that even other mafias needed his approval to eliminate someone. Frank and Russell's relationship grew closer, and Russell began to confide in Frank. Frank took on more significant tasks for Russell, such as managing delayed payments from Russell's clients. Although Frank was generally calm and wise, he became furious one day when he learned that his daughter had been mistreated by a grocery store owner. He confronted the owner and ended up injuring him severely, even breaking his hand. Frank's bond with Russell became so strong that Russell became the godfather of Frank's child. While Frank was searching for extra work, he met a mafia member who wanted a laundromat destroyed because it was affecting his business. After receiving payment, Frank quickly carried out the task. However, Bruno, a highly respected mafia figure in the area, discovered Frank's involvement. As it turned out, Bruno was a stakeholder in the laundromat and was furious with Frank. Fortunately, Russell intervened and helped Frank resolve the situation. To compensate for Bruno's losses, Frank had to collaborate with him. His new assignment was to eliminate the person who had ordered the destruction of the laundromat. Frank started working with Bruno as a hitman and soon became a regular. 
Although he never asked for payment, he saw his work as a way to honor Bruno for providing him with employment. With his steady income, Frank's life started to improve. He could support his family and take days off to relax with them, while Bruno became a constant presence in his life. Bruno even treated Frank's children as his own, since he was unable to have children himself. One day, Bruno introduced Frank to Jimmy Hoffa, the leader of the powerful labor union, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Jimmy was one of the most influential figures in the country, second only to the president. The union had over a million members, and they entrusted their pension funds to it. Jimmy requested Frank to travel to Chicago to help resolve a dispute among taxi drivers. There, Frank met Salerno, Jimmy's associate, who managed operations in the area. Salerno explained that they competed with another taxi company, causing them financial losses. Frank successfully helped eliminate the competition, restoring Salerno's taxi company to its former success. After Frank's accomplishment, Salerno disclosed every detail of Frank's strategy to Jimmy. Following Salerno's departure, Jimmy insisted that Frank stay at his house to avoid having his name associated with any hotels in Chicago. After their Chicago business, Frank and Jimmy's relationship deepened. They often spent time together in the park with their families, discussing business matters. During this time, Frank discovered that Jimmy was using the pension funds of union workers to provide loans to the mafia at high interest rates. These loans were managed by one of Jimmy's associates, Alan, who received a 10% cut from the deals. The majority of Jimmy's loan money was funneled into the mafia's gambling enterprises, contributing significantly to the development of Las Vegas as it is known today. Jimmy amassed immense wealth from these operations, allowing his wife to purchase 22% of land in Florida and even establish her own skiing club with its own snow mountain. One notable recipient of Jimmy's loans was Sam Giancana, a businessman and close associate of the Kennedy family, including one of the former presidents of America. The Mafia's financial backing played a significant role in facilitating Kennedy's presidential campaign. John F. Kennedy had an agreement with the American Mafia to assist in taking control of some businesses in Cuba from Fidel Castro. This worried Jimmy because he knew his own business would be at risk if Kennedy became president as he wouldn't be able to conduct his legal business freely. The Kennedy family learned about Jimmy's loans from the pension fund, and Jimmy was furious when he discovered that someone from the Kennedy family was involved with Jimmy's union work. After John F. Kennedy became president, he appointed his brother, Robert Kennedy, as attorney general, causing further trouble for Jimmy's business. Frank confided everything to Russell, who promised to speak to JFK's father, Joseph Kennedy, to remind him of Jimmy's support for JFK's presidential campaign. Frank was then assigned to deliver weapons for the Mafia's attempt to overthrow Fidel Castro in Cuba. However, the mission failed disastrously, resulting in a humiliating defeat for America and tarnishing JFK's reputation. To address the situation, Robert Kennedy suggested targeting Jimmy's illegal business to restore JFK's reputation. Robert was aware that Jimmy had contributed $500,000 from workers' pensions to Nixon, JFK's presidential opponent, and decided to address this issue first. During a workers' meeting, Jimmy and Frank addressed concerns about retirement funds at the union. They encountered Tony Provenzano, a union representative from New Jersey. Tony's shady tactics to secure his position troubled Jimmy. Despite their childhood acquaintance, Tony's ruthless behavior, like ordering competitors' deaths, made Jimmy uneasy. Jimmy felt responsible for Tony's mistakes during trials. To mitigate Tony's influence, Jimmy planned to replace him with his deputy, Frank. Jimmy convinced Frank to accept the responsibility for the sake of his family. Reluctantly, Frank agreed, earning him a significant promotion to union president as Jimmy's representative. As Jimmy faced mounting challenges and legal battles, his worries intensified. During Jimmy's trial, there was an attempt on his life, but fortunately, it failed. Afterward, Jimmy received constant protection during the trial. His group also started investigating the backgrounds of witnesses and reporters attending the trial. They dug up past mistakes and used blackmail to pressure them into withdrawing their reports. One day, while having coffee, Jimmy and Russell heard about JFK's assassination, which pleased Jimmy because it weakened Robert Kennedy's ability to challenge him. Jimmy even banned mourning JFK's death at the labor union office. Despite JFK's death, the jury unanimously sentenced Jimmy to five years in prison, but his union's lending activities continued. 
thanks to preparations made by his confidant, Fitz. Fitz took over as the temporary union president, but Russell disliked Allen's hindrance to mafia loan applications, even with Fitz's approval. Russell asked Frank to teach Allen a lesson about his mistakes. The next day, Frank shot Allen multiple times to ensure he learned his lesson. After that incident, Allen never interfered with mafia loan applications again. Meanwhile, Tony got arrested by the FBI and ended up in the same prison as Jimmy. Tony received a seven-year sentence. While having a meal in the prison cafeteria, Tony approached Jimmy about his missing retirement money, which amounted to $1.2 million. In contrast, Jimmy's pension fund, which was a larger sum, remained intact. Despite both being in jail, Jimmy's money hadn't disappeared like Tony's. Jimmy explained to Tony that their cases were different. Tony was arrested for extortion, while Jimmy faced charges related to fraud. Tony couldn't accept that only his money was missing, leading to an argument that escalated into a fight. Russell informed Frank about another mafia figure named Crazy Joe Gallo. Despite both being Italians, Russell didn't like Joe because of his bad attitude and disrespectful behavior. Joe didn't hesitate to resort to violence, even against fellow Italians, to achieve his goals. During Russell's birthday celebration, Joe mocked him, which angered Russell. Frank quickly intervened and reminded Joe and Russell that they were all part of the mob and shouldn't disrespect each other. However, Joe disregarded this and left with a mocking expression. Understanding Russell's desire for retribution, Frank took matters into his own hands. While Joy, Frank's wife, and his children were dining at a restaurant, Frank appeared suddenly and fatally shot Joe in front of his family. The next day, Frank saw the news of Joe's murder while having breakfast, and his daughter Peggy realized that her father was responsible for Joe's death. After spending years in prison, President Nixon was elected. He remembered Jimmy giving him $500,000 for his campaign and promptly arranged parole for Jimmy. However, the union was now completely controlled by Fitz, which motivated Jimmy to reclaim it. Jimmy's feud with Tony, who was in jail, complicated his efforts to regain his union position. At a meeting in Florida, Jimmy and Anthony clashed, resulting in a fight reminiscent of their prison days. On their way home, Jimmy asked Frank to help him get Russell's permission to kill Tony. Frank explained the difficulty of this request, believing that reclaiming the union leadership would be tough for Jimmy, especially given his conflict with Tony. Despite Jimmy's desire for violent action, most of the Mafia advised against it. As tensions escalated, Jimmy became increasingly impatient and aggressive. He used the media to attack Fitz and Tony's reputations, sparking a cold war between them. Fitz, feeling targeted by Jimmy's media assault, retaliated by blowing up Jimmy's friend's boat. In response, Jimmy planted an explosion in Fitz's son's car to halt his son's promotion within the Union. Fitz then fired Jimmy's wife from her position at a branch office of the Union. Jimmy, feeling emotional, publicly accused Fitz of lending Union pension money to the Mafia for illegal activities in exchange for high interest. Salerno, a prominent figure in the Mafia who often borrowed money from the Union, was concerned about Jimmy's public accusations. He feared Jimmy's actions could damage the Mafia's interests and potentially turn Jimmy into an enemy. Salerno asked Frank to advise Jimmy to stop his actions to avoid harm to everyone involved. Frank, Salerno, and Russell discussed the situation and decided that it was best for Jimmy to retire quietly and collect his pension. Frank conveyed this message to Jimmy, but Jimmy refused to retire. He was determined to reclaim leadership of the Union, driven by his pride and refusal to step down. Frank found himself in a tough spot. Jimmy, his friend, took actions that put them both at risk. Jimmy's decision to expose Mafia secrets and his determination to regain control of the Union chairmanship alarmed Frank. Frank knew that the Mafia would come after Jimmy, fearing their illegal dealings would be exposed. Unfortunately, Frank also faced trouble with other mobsters because of his close association with Jimmy. Russell stepped in once more to ease tensions. He organized a large gathering among the Mafia to help Jimmy understand the bigger picture. Russell emphasized that the Union's operations affected the survival of all the Mafias, relying on its funding for their businesses, not just Jimmy alone. Salerno informed Russell that Jimmy's actions were blocking many loans from being approved and influencing donors not to contribute to the Union. 
causing problems for the mafias. This situation could escalate into a mafia conflict over access to union loans. Russell realized that the only solution was to convince Jimmy to cooperate and resolve the loan issues instead of fighting for union leadership. That night, Russell had a heart-to-heart -heart with Jimmy, urging him to reconsider his stance. Russell explained that the mafia had been cautioning him about Jimmy's involvement in union funding matters, but Jimmy remained adamant. Jimmy even insisted that the mafias had to support him in reclaiming his leadership if they wanted access to union funds. Russell and Frank found themselves in a difficult situation, torn between their loyalty to Jimmy and the need for peace within the Mafia. Finally, Russell had to resort to drastic measures. He devised a plan for Jimmy that day, giving Frank a ring identical to Russell's own. Russell explained to Frank that the situation had spiraled out of control. Their friend Jimmy had endangered everyone, including Russell himself. He urged Frank once more to reason with Jimmy. Jimmy's actions had to be stopped, no matter what. Frank advised Jimmy again to cease his activities or face consequences. However, Jimmy remained defiant. He claimed to possess legal evidence of mafia transactions, threatening to expose everything to the media if harmed. After much deliberation, Russell made a decision a few days later. He instructed Frank to fly to Detroit immediately for a meeting arranged between Frank and Jimmy. Frank understood his mission, to kill Jimmy. The decision had been made by everyone involved. Frank understood that carrying out his orders to eliminate Jimmy would deeply affect his family, given their close friendship. However, he felt compelled to obey Russell's commands to protect his own family. Boarding a plane to Detroit, Frank wrestled with the weight of his mission throughout the journey. He lamented the unfortunate turn of events between him and Jimmy. Upon arriving in Detroit, Frank waited with Sally, a trusted associate of Tony, for Jimmy's son to collect them. Together, they proceeded to Jimmy's residence. Upon arrival, they found the house empty, much to Jimmy's frustration. As they prepared to depart, Frank, in a swift and decisive moment, drew his gun from his jacket and fatally shot Jimmy. Afterward, Frank promptly returned to report to Russell, confirming the successful completion of the task. Meanwhile, Sally and Tony managed Jimmy's body cremating it to erase evidence of his demise. With Jimmy gone, however, matters worsened. Problems escalated, prompting Sally to eliminate Tony's rivals to safeguard his position. Russell ordered Sally to be killed for going to a federal building without informing anyone, but it later turned out that the his was done in error. Soon after, law enforcement laid a trap for Russell. Consequently, both Russell and Frank fell into the FBI's hands, Although evidence of Frank's involvement was destroyed by Russell, he faced charges related to detonating a factory. To mitigate his sentence, Frank's valuable assets, received as gifts from Jimmy, were confiscated. After they were jailed, Salerno battled prostate cancer, while Russell suffered a stroke, and Frank himself grappled with arthritis. Russell began to contemplate his decision to kill Jimmy and discussed it with Frank. One day, Russell was seen going to church, much to Frank's surprise, and soon after Russell passed away. Frank eventually regained his freedom, but age had caught up with him, rendering him unable to resume his former life. He relied heavily on medication to cope. His daughter Peggy, aware of his actions, harbored intense resentment toward Frank and refused to reconcile with him. Frank bore the weight of his regrets heavily. Realizing his mortality, Frank visited a coffin dealer the next day and arranged for his own burial. He paid for his funeral, acknowledging that his time was drawing near. As time passed, Frank found himself increasingly alone, with everyone he knew passing away one by one. In a moment of reckoning, Frank decided to unburden his soul to a pastor. Despite the gravity of his crimes, Frank's secrets remained hidden, known only to those involved who carried them to their graves. He never revealed to anyone what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.